Hello, everyone. This is Whitney Will from Starheart Astrology, and today I am here for your midweek astrology check-in. So in this video, I just go over the transits happening over the next week. We kind of ground in to what it feels like, what's going on, the big news, the big stuff is Venus went into Pisces yesterday. Yesterday, Tuesday morning, the 5th, Venus went into Pisces, bringing to an end our five months of Venus ruled by Saturn, of Venus besieged by malefics, of Venus retrograde in Capricorn conjunct Pluto. And so there is a sweet exhale, depending on the role, of course, that Venus plays in your chart, in your year, if she's Lord of the year, if she is your perfected monthly planet, et cetera, et cetera. But there is a softening of this. And so right now is the time to be reaching out to people again, or maybe just resting for a moment um, as the kind of harder edges of Saturn yield to the softness of Venus and of Jupiter, both empowered in Pisces. So even though it's airy season, we're really kind of swimming in the Pisces soup, the softness of the Pisces soup. Um, and so I think, I mean, that's the main thing to just be there. Um, and just receive what it is. You know, there's some other transits go, coming up, but not these kind of headline transits until we reach next week, right? We're in this place of profound softness. So as much as you can offer that to yourself and then to others, I think that's really kind of what is welcomed in this moment. So we have Venus moving into, moved into Pisces. We have a waxing moon this week. So there is a kind of optimism, a kind of growth, but it's in a very different space than we've been paying attention to, it's, right? It's not in this space of fear or scarcity or harshness or alienation, um, but in this place of where our faith is being restored, even if we haven't been looking at it too directly. So that's the news this week. The moon goes into Cancer tomorrow, which I think is really sweet, right? She'll form a nice trine to Venus and that will be a kind of more welcoming into this tenderness that will continue until the moon goes into Leo on Saturday night. Um, which is fun. So, right, the moon in Leo right now is ruled by an exalted sun in Aries. So it sounds like a fun Saturday night. Um, the next thing that we run into on Sunday, we have Mercury square Pluto, but kind of just for a moment at the very end of Aries, maybe saying something that was a little bit too honest or too kind of on, on top of things. Um, but that kind of lasts a moment before Mercury moves into Taurus. So Mercury is moving so fast now in the fastest part of their cycle and they head into Taurus. And so what do we have with Mercury and Taurus? Well, we have a couple of things. So for one, Mercury and Taurus is ruled by Venus who's exalted in Pisces. So very, very nice. Mercury is moving away from Mars, from being ruled by Mars, conjoining Saturn, right? Um, in a difficult situation to a very empowered ruler. So being able to speak in a way that smooths things, that creates comfort and peace, um, that can be kind of one way that we view this. Now, Mercury is also moving into Taurus and I find Mercury and Taurus to be one of the most taciturn. Mercury's just not, um, not super interested in exploring things with words and ideas in a shared context. It seems to be a little bit more private, a little bit more inward, a little bit more self-contained. Um, 
a little bit less mercurial. So there's also that, right? It can come down to kind of nonverbal practices, um, which can create peace, <laughs> right? Um, then, what was the last piece? Well, Mercury is entering the sign that it will retrograde back into, right? We're not in the shadow of the retrograde. We'll enter the shadow of the retrograde, I think, yeah, on the on April 26th. So we have a Mercury retrograde coming up, it will station retrograde in Gemini and move back into Taurus. So we're in the Taurus theme, right? This means Mercury is going to be moving into a new house in your chart. Um, and so looking at where that falls, we might start thinking about that. Now, I think on the collective level, Mercury and Taurus is going to really draw our attention to how inflation is affecting like survivability, right? Taurus things. How are we safe? Are we fed? Are we sheltered? How is the North Node in Taurus? How is Uranus in Taurus? How is the housing market and the conflict in Ukraine and the supply chain issues, right? I think that is really going to be brought into focus during this transit and through the course of the retrograde. And we're gonna be thinking about things in more concrete Taurus terms. Um, and then, right, then we're really working towards next Tuesday when we have the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction. And this Jupiter-Neptune conjunction, you know, when I'm looking at these transits and I'm feeling these transits and I'm asking them what is being called for, you know, I think on the collective level, we see a new cycle of creativity and ways of engaging with reality to make it more beautiful. I think there's a new dawn of hope personally and collectively about what's possible. Um, so I think those things are really beautiful. Of course, with Neptune, we're dealing with confusion, possible delusion, right? Our dreams might be bigger than Saturn really lets be possible. Um, but that's fine. I don't find those things in conflict, right? Every major religion wrestles with how the sacred and profane live next to each other. How do we imbue matter with spirit and what is that dance and all the beauty in the world is right is expression of the dance of how divinity exists in the material and so i think right with this jupiter conjunct neptune we really have a kind of infusion of divinity into a world that has felt very heavy very saturnian um, very weighed down by obligation and limitation. And so I think that is a powerful tonic, right? The only thing is, right, just because it's infusing our reality and bringing this kind of lifeblood of divinity back into our experience, right, it's staying grounded and not trying to transcend the things in our lives because right, how we interact in the dance between the sacred and the profane, between the earthly and the heavenly, right? We are beings in time and right, while it may seem beautiful to like reach this, I don't know, divine purity, that's not what our Saturn work is here. Um, and so I think the more that we have our eyes open to that truth, um, the more we can kind of ex fully experience things and let them wash over us without being caught up in, um, in a kind of tragedy of trying to escape where we are. Um, and Jupiter and Neptune can definitely want us to escape, right? Um, there, you know, I have also been thinking about this transit in terms of dissolving of boundaries and I think it was Lisa Shine that talked about the possibility of great waves of grief through this transit. So, right, Neptune kind of dissolving the container of this kind of collective tense inhale that we've had around what we've been experiencing. So, right, this can be the thawing of the more like trauma freeze state and what can come out is a lot of grief, um, a lot of other things too, but that's one of the things. Um, but really the piece that has, 
you know, that I've been savoring the most about this transit is the theme of forgiveness and what forgiveness means and what that looks like. And, you know, how we can hold on to our wounds from a place of pride or righteousness or right. I mean, I think there's a defense in that, right? We need to hold on to our wounds until they can help us create boundaries, until we can make peace with the fact that they happened, right? But forgiveness is really a gesture of hopefulness towards what's possible next in the world. And so that goes for forgiving people that we perceive have wronged us um, and also forgiving ourselves for who we have been in different places in our lives and letting go of kind of the guilt and shame of those things. Um, and right, saying yes to the next possibility and towards the next um, opening of what is to come. And so I'm thinking about this transit in terms of kind of dissolving any kind of hardened, condensed identities that we have assigned to ourselves. And through this act of forgiveness, which is an act of cleansing, um, to kind of surrender ourselves back into, um, you know, the life and the roles that are waiting for us to experience. So that's what I have for you guys today. Um, it's kind of a dreamy, mystical week. And um, yeah, I hope you just let yourself marinate in it. And don't work too hard. Okay, have a good week. I'll be next, I'll be back next week. Bye.